As we come down then to near the end, I'm down to the list of thank yous, and there's many, many people to thank who helped make this event possible. Starting off with the people here in Montreal, of course our partners AIDQ, but also the local organizing committee um, here, in, here in Montreal who helped with so many logistical things, putting together the harm reduction services, our friends at Cactus, our friends at Absud, and also our friends at the Ministry of Health, all of whom were in instrumental in making this event happen. Uh, the people who organized and hosted the site visits here across the city, I know many people went on home reduction site visits, visiting other organizations. Um, thanks to the venue here, to Lewis and Jackie and their teams for helping us here. Uh, to the technical team, led by Bill and Pascal, thanks so much. Very few technical problems that I saw at all, very, very smooth. Uh, the translators, of course, uh, our donors who help make things happen, particularly the donors who give us money for scholarships to help bring people um, from near and far to the conference, our exhibitors. Um, and. I'd like to make a special thanks to our volunteers. Do we have our volunteers in the audience? Where are the volunteers? Stand up, where are the volunteers? I see a few blue shirts. Thank you so much for taking so much time. We had about 50 volunteers helping us out this week, and it was really amazing. Thanks for all your help. I know it was a bit disorganized at times at the beginning when everything's happening so fast, and we appreciate your patience in helping us out. Um, where are the members of the medical team? Is Jilly. Get up here. <laughs> This is our wonderful medical services team who you saw in the film and have worked so hard all week to keep everyone safe. Has anybody heard of any overdoses at the conference? We did it. We took care of each other. Good work, good work Montreal. Thank you so much. But as we're painfully aware, it's never enough. Enough is not being done. The gentleman who spoke first, Evel, that needs to be done. Where's the anger? Where's the broken glass? Where are the Molotovs? Act Up did it. The book, How to Fight a Plague or Spot a Plague, the movie is nothing to what they really did. They did incredible things that worked. We need that kind of spirit. We need that fight. No one is going to listen to us. You don't just lie down when people are kicking you all the time. And I want this to be such a happy occasion. It can never can be. And to you, Madame, I'm so sorry about your daughter. But I'm so happy that there are people, everybody in this auditorium, everybody who's ever been there to the conference today who care about your daughter, who cared about her and took care of her, and she took care of other people and passed it on. And you and your family are my inspiration because I do it for you to protect you and your baby. So I am very sorry. Thank you for speaking. Goodbye. Oh, thank you so much, you guys, and thank all of you. <laughs>
Um, one of the numbers I didn't mention when I was reading them at the beginning was we had actually 27 registered media outlets here this week, um, which is probably among the best we've ever had, and that's really important. We've heard so many people this week talking about the need to get our own stories out and to counter the kind of racist, you know, anti-user prejudice that we see across the country and across the world. And I know that having those media here has helped get some of those positive messages out. So thanks very much to Michael and Matilda, our media team, who coordinated that. Um, we talked, or I talked at the beginning about sort of this event being a family and a family affair. Well, this conference really was a family affair more than one way. I mentioned Pat O'Hare, our founder, who organized the first 12 conferences? 16 conferences? Well, his two daughters, Maddie and Lucy, organized this conference. So you saw, the, you saw the, the young children being, you know, carted around at this conference. They grow up to be harm reduction organizers. <laughs> so I'd like, in addition to Lucy and Maddie, our conference team, we have, actually have a, a big event put on by a very small conference team. It's Lucy and Maddie, Pippa, Holly, um, Thomas, who's here somewhere, who did all of our web stuff, and our colleague Sarah, who is back in um, London. But stand up and let everyone give you a round of applause and show. <laughs> in addition to them, I really want to thank my other co-workers at HRI, all of whom pitched in to making this happen. And I include in that our former colleague, Maria Phelan, who abandoned us three months ago for the Robert Carr Fund, but who was with us until February and was integrally involved in designing the program and helping put all the conceptual ideas for the conference together. So thanks to the team, and thanks to Maria, our extended family as the team. Thanks again to Peter and Istvan for putting the film festival together. Um, a couple of things I wanted to say before um, we invite our elder Sedalia back to join us. Um, probably the next big international event coming up will be the AIDS conference uh, in the Netherlands in 2018. For those of us who've been to AIDS conferences before, we know that the visibility of harm reduction issues of people who use drugs is often very low at those conferences. Obviously, having it in Amsterdam, we have a very supportive environment. The government of the Netherlands is one of the biggest harm reduction donors in the world and a big advocate for harm reduction and human rights within international arenas. Um, but and for all of us to be present at that conference, we have to make sure that we submit abstracts, we submit proposals um, to make sure that we are very visible at that and use that as an opportunity. So I encourage encourage you all to do that. Um, some of you may have been following the news recently about our good friend and comrade Carl Hart and what's been happening with him. Carl Hart, of course, the very uh, prestigious uh, neuroscientist at Columbia University and also just a shit-kicking activist um, who was in the Philippines last week um, talking at a drug conference um, where he reported on some of his research around methamphetamine and within that um, conference specifically refuting President Duterte's suggestion that methamphetamine shrinks your brain, which is the, kind of the context for some of the war on drugs killings. Ta Carl just basically said that's a bunch of bullshit. Um, as a result of that, Duterte specifically attacked Carl in the press. Carl started to get death threats while he was in the Philippines from Duterte's thugs and had to flee the country basically early. I'd like on behalf of our entire conference to send solidarity to Carl. He's a great friend of us. He was planning to be here actually um, to come straight from the Philippines but I think given everything that was happening he wasn't able to get up here so I'd like to send on behalf of the conference our solidarity to him. And a final, a final thank you on this. Um, I've had the privilege of working with uh, the chair of our board, John Peter Cools, for the last two terms that he's been at the board. Um, he's been an incredible rock in the organization, a fantastic harm reduction pioneer um, within Europe and around the world and has taken that knowledge and experience far and afield to, to Eurasia, into Africa. Um, John Peter, after serving his two terms on the board, will be stepping down as chair. So this will be his last conference as chair. I'm certainly not his last conference. 
In fact, your term actually finished like six months ago, so you're still technically chair, but you'll be gone by then. I um, want to thank a big thank you on behalf of me personally and the organization for all of your work uh, over the last, you know, well, you've been on the board for more than two terms, but two terms as the chair. So thank you very much, John Peter. Thank <laughs> you.